So here we're going to talk about so-called closest pack structures. And to illustrate, we're going to start out with something that is not closest pack. Let's say we have a layer of tennis balls and we want to put them in a box. And the next layer, let's say we put direct the next layer of tennis balls directly over the first layer. And we put the next layer on top of that directly on top of the previous ones. So you can see that these guys all line up and these fellows all line up, etc. Well, that is a type of close pack structure, uh, often referred to as a cubic close pack, because if we look at the alignment, we get something like a cube. We'll have a, in a diagram where we've separated the, the atoms a bit. Of course, in this diagram up here, they're all touching here. We're not showing them touching, but we have this vertical alignment where these guys are directly on top of one another. But that's not the closest possible way to arrange the atoms. If we take a layer here, instead of putting one right here, we could instead take a series of atoms and take advantage of that divis, divot and then put them over here. So our next layer can be a little bit more uh, closely packed than in this case over here. So we've saved a little bit of the space by taking advantage of those divots. And we could do the same thing over here. We could take advantage of the divots and then put atoms over here. And depending on how we take advantage of those divots, we could do it in repeating layers, where we have an A layer shown here in orange, and then a B layer shown here in green, and then these, this is also an A layer because it's directly above these guys. So these are in analogous positions. So uh, we just really have two layers that are repeating over and over again, and in that case, we call it a hexagonal closest pact, or HCP. And it comes from the fact that if you start uh, connecting atoms with bonds, you can work out a hexagonal type structure. Another way of doing this, I'm not going to try to draw it because we have this very nice figure from uh, Dexter Perkins' online textbook, is we can have the A layer in orange again here. Uh, we can have a B layer, which is shown in green here but we can have a distinct C layer. Again, it's taking advantage of divots, but a separate set of divots. So in this case, we get three layers, an ABC structure, and in that case, we call it a CCP structure, or cubic closest pack. And it's a cubic closest pack because you can work out a face-centered cubic structure as shown here. And then another type of uh, close pack, not necessarily closest pack, is if we come back to this cubic uh, case here, so this fellow here, we'll just call this uh, cubic closed pack, not closest packed. We can take an atom and put it in the center, and then that would give us a so-called BCC, or body-centered structure. We've got a body of a cube, and then we've put something in the center of it, so hence the name body centered or BCC. Uh, again, that is not a closest pack structure, but it is a close packing of the atoms. Uh, and then it gives us this uh, particular, or this would be a cesium chloride stru structure, for example, the, uh, this case here. So we have different kinds of ways of packing atoms together, especially if they're all the same size. And this is not going to happen with a lot of ionically or even many covalently bonded substances. But for metals uh, and perhaps even some uh, sulfides or sulfur, sulfur salts, uh, oxides, etc., this kind of close packing might be approximated, depending on the size of the atom. If the atoms are very different in size, then this entire uh, packing structure is off. And instead, we would look at so-called radius ratios, as we explain in looking at Pauling's rules and his uh, rule of the coordination principle.